Aloha, I'm Chef Mark, owner and chef of 62 Market Restaurant here in Waizuku, Hawaii. Uh, I was asked to provide with a, uh, a demonstration and a recipe for a holiday meal. Being in the hotel so long, we uh, used to do a lot of roasted tenderloin. One of my favorites is the mustard crusted roasted tenderloin that we're going to demo right now. Uh, first, you want to get the whole tenderloin. Part of it is the head. I cut the head off because it's the best way to utilize this product. What we're going to do is we're going to oil it a little bit, rub the oil in, and season it pretty heavily. We have a cast iron skillet getting hot right now. We want it to get fairly hot because we want to get a good sear on this. All the garlic and the stuff and the thyme and all those herbs, we're going to apply to the rub that we're going to make while this is searing. We're going to do many things in really quick time, okay? So, I'm going to make sure that's, that cast iron skillet is hot. Use a little clarified butter. That looks like it's getting good. You want to definitely hear the sear. If you don't hear a sear, it's probably not searing. What we're doing fertilizing the outside. Okay, so while that's happening, we're going to make the mustard crust. The mustard crust is whole grain mustard. We have a little Dijon mustard, a little salad mustard. Typically is three to one. Whole grain is the majority. A little garlic, a little chopped thyme, a little chopped rosemary. Okay. Since we've already put salt and pepper on our tenderloin, we shouldn't have to salt and pepper this. But if you think you haven't added enough salt and pepper, remember how big your tenderloin is. It's a fairly big piece right now. You don't want to move that thing because you know you've got a good crust on it. We're going to move it on all sides. Okay, so our crust is ready. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get these potatoes ready. Little baby potatoes, little olive oil. We have the oven at 375 degrees already. We need to put a little salt and pepper. You can add anything to these. I'm going to add a little of these herbs, a little chopped herbs. There's a little bit of sage, there's rosemary, there's thyme, and Italian flat leaf parsley all in there, okay? Make sure you mix those all up. You can add anything into there, but we're going to roast those. Those are going to be our oven roasted potatoes that we're going to serve. And those can start into the oven right now. Let's check some of our... Oh. Yeah, that's getting good, but we want to have I don't have the overhead hoods on because we want to be able to hear me talk. They're quite loud. So, as that's going, we're going to start our glazed carrot. <laughs> okay. These are the baby carrots that I usually get from Kupa'a Farms and also Kumu Farms. I'm going to put those in the field. things and then we're going to add a little bit of butter. That's going to boil down and when it's done boiling down those carrots will be all cooked. The butter and the sugar will create the glaze. Okay. See how this is doing. Two of the four sides are nice. If I was going to mustard crust it I would put a little bit of whole butter some fresh garlic in there, some thyme and butter base it, butter base it while it's cooking. But all those items already are in our crust. We'll find the lid for that. Like that. 
not cooking quickly. That's going to be a beautiful rose. We're going to utilize the pan and all the fawn. The fawn is the, the drippings that have caramelized onto the bottom of the pan that most people throw out or wash out. You want to deglaze those. You can use a nice skillet if you want to. I like a cast iron skillet only because it retains heat well. Okay, so as soon as this is done, we're going to put this on the rack. And turn that, peel it off. Look how beautiful that is. Traditional Chateaubriand is the center cut, which would be the next uh, 600 grams of that tenderloin. A lot of people don't even know how to utilize that head, so utilize it this way first. Okay, so we're going to that to the back. Carrots are cooking, potatoes are cooking. We are going to apply the mustard crust. Remember, this is really hot. If you're at home and you got some time, chill this down just a little bit so that it can not melt away the mustard. But this, if you can do this the day before and let that sit in your refrigerator with that mustard crust on it, you are going to be very happy. Okay, we're putting it on a wire rack so it can sit above the pan, so it can cook evenly. Heat can go underneath it as well. Okay, we'll put a little bit more on it, just in case none of it got into there, but I think we're all covered. Okay, we want to cook this until 125 degrees. We're going to make our sauce. It's going to be a pan sauce, a wine pan sauce. We have some shallots and some garlic. Okay, we're ready to the cast iron skillet that we have. It's still hot. Whenever it's ready, because once that roast comes out and rests, all we're going to be waiting for is the potatoes and the carrots. All right? We're going to put in some cremini mushrooms. Cremini are getting for the bellows. You can use a little bit more oil, add a little bit more oil to it, but don't let your shallots burn or they become very bitter. Develop that and then we're going to add the red wine. Put your shallots in the carrot leaf. You can add garlic if you want to. We already have garlic in our roasted crust. The dinner is the sum of the parts. Red wine, you can use red wine and port wine is my favorite. Port wine has so much sugar content, it's going to make it a little sweetness. You can put dried cherries in it. Okay. We're going to reduce this down until it comes set to SEC, which is almost dry. And then we're going to add the demi glace. Demi glace is a, a fond de veau, which is a feel, feel reduction. The bones, the real bones. Fresh time. So all the mushrooms were basically sucking in all that red wine. Flavor is getting sucked in by the mushroom. Once I add the demi glaze, it'll release it back into the salad. <laughs> then we'll just cook it down to the consistency we're looking for. We'll try a little bit of carrot. Put beautiful carrots in there. that sauce reduced down to a glaze and then we'll add the carrot back. Okay. So your sauce is almost dry. Now we add the red wine. 
the real Jenny. If you're not going to make your own Jenny Jones, you can probably buy it from uh, one of your distributors. Three files import any of those. Okay. Especially in the kitchen, there's a lot going on. That's feeling pretty rare. Yep, that's going to have to go some more because we're going to do a reading. So where we're at. Right in the center. It's about still about 85, 86 to the center. To the outside edges, you can tell it's the temperature we want, but we want the center to be beautiful. So, we'll put it back in. Okay. Wine sauce is looking good. Flavor from the tenderloin that we seared in this pan. We'll check the consistency, but what we want is nappe. French word basically means to coat the back of the spoon. It's perfect. So we turn that off. We're going to munt a little butter into it. Munt. Munt over. Butter. This is not one of the healthier meals. But around the holidays, nobody's really counting the calories. That's going to give it a luster. You want to keep it moving. You don't want that butter to clarify and become greasy. down this stock butter and sugar to our little glaze. Put our carrots back in. These carrots are cooked now. Now you want them to be glazed. You say you can add maple syrup or anything, coconut syrup, anything your favorite to it. But for the holidays, we always have glazed baby carrots. We don't see anything less than 125 in here. There's a gigantic tenderloin like we used to cook. It'd be 119. Okay. 
So we're gonna let that rest about 20 minutes. We'll slice it and we'll be ready. Okay, we're back. We'll let the roast rest. Now we're gonna see. White bomber, paper, grill. Okay, so this was a 550 grammer, or about a pound and a third. Two different plate up. One is more of a traditional one, plating up with things not touching each other. Another one is more of a contemporary. And the little nug is usually for whoever's in the kitchen that gets to have a little taste of the final product. note what you have been using to cook. Obviously those are removed. But it gives it a little something. Happy holidays everyone.